Okay, hopefully this works now. So, shall we start then? Okay, let's start. So, terrain generation uh, in voxel-based games. Uh, how do we generate terrain? So, the first idea is have a look at the nature. How does nature do it? So, what does nature do actually? I'll be drawing a lot of pictures. So, we have Max here who can uh, zoom in on the pictures for us. Let's suppose we have a 2D cross-section of the terrain. So nature first creates volcanoes, trenches. It has lots, of, lots, lots and lots of processes, uh, ge geological, physical, biological. It just generates mountains. Then, by time, erosion kicks in, so we get, sorry, smaller mountains less deep ditches, and it smooths out. Then, you get soil, and finally, biology kicks in, we get ve vegetation, trees, etc. So, this is nice, we have nice terrain, but the problem is, uh, this kind of generation is global. So, uh, when there's a mountain here, and there's wind blowing from this side, uh, this thing gets really dry, and there's, that's where deserts would form. But in order to know that there's a desert here, we need to know there's a mountain here, and there's a wind source here, and etc. So we can't really use that for generating uh, in a game, because uh, we need to generate smaller chunks. So what do we do instead? Actually, what do we what do we need for a generator in game? Uh, we need to be generate. Uh, we need we need it to generate in small chunks so that we can split the scenery like this, and we need to be able to generate every single stripe of the scenery uh, independently of the other stripes, or rather independently. Uh, this is probably the most. Uh, most major uh, property of uh, the generator that it needs to be localized. It cannot uh, depend on global things. Another property that is quite useful to have, and uh, in fact we can't do without it right now, uh, is repeatability. Let's say the, use, uh, the server admin says, let's start this chunk all over again. So the generator must be able to actually generate the same terrain over and over again in the same place. This comes in handy in optimizations, as we'll see later on. And these two properties are what are driving uh, the generator uh, design behind uh, that we use in CubeWrite right now. Of course, the generator needs to be also obviously fast because uh, without a fast generator, if it takes 10 minutes to generate a chunk, it's no use for us. Uh, okay. Let's have a little detour now. Uh, I'd like to talk about noise functions. Uh, what those are, uh, let's dive into math. Uh, we have a function that takes integer numbers and returns another integer number. Uh, the function uh, returns, the, the, the return number of the function is uh, the same when we give it the same coordinates. That is uh, one basic property that uh, distinguishes a noise function from a random function. Random function means just give me a number no matter what the number is. Uh, noise function means we give it coordinates and it gives us the same number for the same coordinates all the time. Uh, why we use inti integer-based coordinates? Um, because it's fast. Integer math is much faster in CPUs uh, than floating point. Uh, how, uh, how we deal with that uh, Of course, in terrain generation, we don't want integer height because we would have mountain, valley, plains, etc. That wouldn't be a nice terrain, right? We need it to be smooth, like this. 
So what we do? Hmm. Where is the eraser? Okay, I'll try. I'll try another picture here. Uh, we take noise function that generates integer point here, another integer point here, another integer point here, another one here. So we can do either steps or we can interpolate using linear interpolation techniques or we can use cubic splines or cosine splines and that's actually what the server is using. So we, we have a way to generate a, a smooth function from a set of coordinates and its neighborhoods. That's a really that's really a basic uh, basis for everything in the server. As you can see, it can, uh, we can already use uh, such a function as a height map so that we know this is mountain, this is valley. We can use it uh, uh, for other things, uh, whatever we need. We need temperature, okay, so let's give it a temperature value. We need a humidity, okay, humidity. We need the number of mobs, okay, let's consider this as a number of mobs. So these random functions are really what's driving the train generator in the background. Okay, uh, let me pause for a while. Okay, so... Any questions for so far? Was this clear enough? Am I speaking clear enough? Am I being understandable? <laughs> okay, we'll wait for the answers. Okay, so let's continue now. Uh, we, have, uh, we have done the uh, nature way, uh, which was global and not so well suited for, games, uh, for game development. Uh, so let's give it another try. Uh, how about uh, we invert the flow? In nature, we had first it generated the terrain, took what, it, what was there, and then modified it. That's not too useful for games. But uh, if we uh, turn it around, so we first uh, gener uh, generate what we want, uh, the, bi the biome, what we want there, like we want a desert there. Then we know that th there are no m mountains in the deserts, so we know how to adjust the uh, terrain height. And finally, we can compose uh, that we know that there's a desert, so we want sand on the top, stone on at the bottom. So what we've done, We've done a composable generator that first, uh, first it generates biomes. It decides where the deserts are, where the swamps are, etc. Then, for each biome, it has specific settings for uh, turn height. So when, when the terrain is uh, generated now, we have mountains, we have plains, etc. Finally, it, uh, it generates a composition. Uh, 
uh, composition means uh, there's grass on the top, uh, there's dirt below the grass, there's stone below the grass, and uh, there's bedrock at the bottom, or when we are in the nether world, that uh, it's composed of netherrack, there, uh, there are caverns there, etc. And the last step of the generation is structures. Uh, we call them finishers. Uh, those things turn uh, water into ice when the temperature is too cold. They, uh, they turn... Uh, what else is there? Uh, they provide the, uh, the tall grass blocks, uh, they make the trees, they make villages, anything, mostly, um, most of the Minecraft content that you, uh, that you see is actually the finishers. Uh, this was the idea of the composable generator that I came up with uh, some two years ago probably, maybe even, maybe even more. And since then, there's been a problem with step number two. Because if we generate terrain height, what we get, uh, let's say this is x or z axis, this one's y axis, so it's height. We can get mountains, we can get plains, but what we can't get is overhangs. Because simply there's no way uh, a terrain height generator could specify this. Uh, we tried to emulate uh, overhangs within finishers. We had a uh, we had a in, uh, finisher that would generate overhangs, but it didn't work so well. So instead of the terrain height, we decided to get rid of it. And we replaced it with shape. So instead of it being a, a function of, okay, let's say turn height used a function that took x and z coordinates and it assigned a y coordinate, which is the height. For the shape, we have a function that takes x, y, and z coordinates, and it assigns what, what you call it density. So uh, basically what it does, it decides whether a block uh, is solid or not solid. So we can say, these blocks are solid, these, these blocks are not. And in this way, we can uh, represent any kind of terrain, really. And it makes really uh, much more sense uh, with a terrain composition then, because now we're basically saying uh, the terrain shape says this all is a stone. And then composition comes in and says, OK, turn this stone into dirt turn this stone into dirt. So that's how these uh, individual parts of the composable generator uh, work together. Another nice thing about the composable generator is that we have several biome generators, several shape generators, several compositions, and lots, and finish lots of finishers. And we can mix and match, which means uh, the, it's really, really very much config configurable. We can choose a biome generator and a different shape, and uh, the terrain generated is very different all the time. If someone doesn't like, uh, for example, the bi Minecraft biomes, they want a world that is entirely e extreme hills. So they set the, their biome generator and they keep the rest. So it's still a Minecraft terrain, but it's not uh, using biomes other than a constant one. It also allows us uh, uh, simple development of new generators. If we come up with an idea for a new biome generator, we don't have to change uh, the generator for people who are already using uh, uh, using uh, the previous generators. They can keep using them, and we have a new one that's sometimes better, sometimes worse, sometimes it's an experiment. 
So this is basically what the composable generator Rewrite has enabled us to do. I think this is more or less uh, uh, what I wanted to talk about in the ideas section. Uh, now let's have a look at individual algorithms, shall we? I prepared a list of all the algorithms that are currently uh, implemented in the server. The list is quite huge. I was not able to actually print it on a page, so I need uh, my laptop and I'll be s uh, moving ar around the screen when I'm talking about them. We've got so many algorithms. <laughs> so, let's take it from the top, shall we? The biome generators. Of course, the easiest biome generators would be constant, which means uh, you choose a biome and it's in the whole world. There's not really an algorithm about it. It's just uh, when you want to test something or you don't like biomes at all, uh, you can use this. Uh, another debugging, or more or less debugging generator is the checkerboard. Uh, which just produces biomes organized into a nice checkerboard pattern. Uh, this way, uh, people can uh, can use it for debugging uh, when they uh, when they want to check uh, interaction between two biomes or three biomes on their borders, whether th the interaction is right or not. This is the ideal debugging uh, generator for this. Then, the next more advanced biome generator is the Voronoi. Sorry, I'm not sure about the pronunciation. I'm using a Czech one here, Voronoi. <laughs> okay, uh, what a Voronoi generator does, it uh, splits One second, please. Okay, uh, a generic Voronoi algorithm uh, uses randomly selected seeds in a plane and then uh, producing a diagram which splits the plane into parts that are uh, the same distance from uh, the two seeds. Or rather to say, uh, it splits the plane so that uh, any point in this part of the, uh, is closest to this seed. Any point in this, pa if this part is closest to this seed. So it generally uh, it generates uh, just a nice uh, tiling of the plane. Unfortunately, uh, when we choose the seeds wrong, which happens quite often, we choose some seeds and then some of them are close to each other, some of them are really far away. Uh, the generated diagram is really noisy and not too suitable as a biome map because we have a huge biome here and really small biomes here. So what we do instead, uh, we use something borrowed from uh, image processing and it's called jitter grid. What this does is uh, it takes a grid, let's say a three by three grid, and in, in each cell of the grid it generates a seed randomly inside this, uh, inside this cell. So here, 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 etc. 
now we know that the seeds are actually quite uh, nicely pop uh, nicely populated and the diagram result the resulting Voronoi diagram is pretty well suited for a biome generator unfortunately uh, it still has straight edges which players in Minecraft don't like too much so the next step would be to add uh, distortion Uh, right now, uh, we have used just the X, uh, the X and Z coordinates. I forgot to mark my axis. Sorry. So we use them directly as they come. But with distortion, uh, we use uh, another set of noise functions to actually modify uh, the query. So let's say we have a Voronoi function. Voronoi function that receives the X and Z coordinates and it tells us biome. What distorted Voronoi does, it, it uses the Voronoi, but not on X and Z, but on noise, X and Z, and another noise, X and Z. Uh, these two noises are very uh, low frequency and very small amplitude, but it still uh, provides us with wavy edges, exactly what we need. Right, let's finish it. So the distorted Voronoi was actually used as the default generator for some time, for some time because it was the best we could do, and it was it was good enough. Next in line, we have a temperature humidity generator. This took a completely different approach uh, than generating seeds and ge uh, generating biome edges, etc. What this does is uh, it chooses, uh, it, it uses a noise function as a uh, as a temperature and another noise function as a humidity so temperature humidity uh, then it has a built-in map which says if the temperature is this and the humidity is this then it's a plains biome so we have 100% zero hundred percent so it has a split that says if it, if the temperature is too high it's either uh, it's either desert or desert or whatever the pronunciation is if it's lower uh, it's plains if it's even lower it's swamp Oh, sorry. And if it's very low, it's ice. The humidity usually is uh, is used for vegetation. So when it's uh, more humid plains, you can expect forests or even jungles. So basically what this does uh, for each, each X and Z coordinate, it picks the temperature and humidity based on the noise and then looks them up in this map and decides, okay, it's a forest. If I were to write it as a function form, uh, it would be the biome map of the noise X, Z, Noise to XZ, where this is the humidity and this is the temperature, and the and the map here means this lookup table. Uh, 
one added uh, feature of this is that uh, we have already a temperature, so we can use it for more than just uh, biomes. We can use it to convert uh, water to ice, etc. We can decide whether it, uh, whether rain falls or, or in the desert it doesn't, or if it's snow instead, etc. This once uh, was actually used for uh, Minecraft uh, in the beta in the beta stages of Minecraft. This was uh, the their default. At least uh, Notch said so. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at another one. The next step that we took uh, was go back to distorted Vernoy for a bit and let's uh, make uh, let's try to make it a little bit uh, more uh, organized because so far uh, the distorted Vernoy would generate deserts next to ice plains with no problem so we need something uh, that would organize uh, by temperature by humidity etc the temperature and humidity was completely a different algorithm, but we still want to stick to Voronoi uh, because it, it's kind of better generator. So the next step was actually move uh, multi step map. Which is basically uh, Basically, it's a combination of Voronoi and temperature humidity. Because first, what it does, it uses Voronoi uh, to decide. Uh, it uses distorted Voronoi, of course. When I say Voronoi, now it's distorted Voronoi from now on. Uh, it uses uh, distorted Voronoi to decide whether the, uh, whether the biome is ocean or land. So we, ha so we get uh, big maps of land ocean oh, my drawing skills are really bad uh, what it does next uh, ocean stays ocean because that's only basically the same biome all over for land it uses uh, the multi uh, for it uses the temperature and humidity uh, to actually convert it to individual biomes And those biomes are uh, using the temperature and humidity, which means uh, they are uh, uh, ice and desert don't go together so well. Uh, they can't reach each other, and the biome uh, borders are making much more sense. Uh, the multi-step map uh, generator was actually used for a long time as a default generator in Cubrite because it was working really well. I believe uh, most of you know uh, I have written some documentation already on the biome generator and uh, it has some pictures so when you look it up uh, the multi-step map uh, has a pretty good picture next to it. Okay, next one. Then Mojang came with a completely revamped uh, terrain generator of their own and we had to uh, react to it because uh, theirs was uh, severely superior to ours. Uh, and we had s a few ideas how we can improve. So what we did was uh, we split biomes into groups. We had uh, dry biomes, 
we had the ocean biomes, we had uh, forest biomes, which included birch forest, uh, dark forest, etc. Then we had mushroom biomes and several other groups. Uh, then we used uh, two levels of distorted Voronoi uh, in this way. First, uh, we had a large Voronoi diagram, which split, uh, which split the plane into large pieces. This was like a thousand blocks, let's say. And it decided uh, this was dry, this was ocean. This was forest. And then we used another Voronoi diagram overlaid over this, which produced small, tiny little cells. And it would choose uh, biomes from the dry group. Here, the small cells would choose from the forest group. So this would be, let's say, forest, birch forest, another forest, plains, etc. So we had uh, several groups of biomes and uh, each group would border, uh, biomes in one group would fo uh, border really well with another uh, biome from that group. Uh, this was actually working pretty well, but we still could, we still could do better. So that's where uh, the last, uh, uh, the last, uh, uh, what's it called? Well, the best generator we have so far, and that's Grown. It takes a completely different approach to things. And when I first implemented it, I was so, so surprised that it actually works. Uh, what the grown uh, generator does, it uses integer arrays, two-dimensional integer arrays, and uh, it does operations on them. So we have an integer array, let's say I've prepared some so that I don't get mistaken. Let's say we have an integer array four by four of these numbers, zero, zero, one, one, Zero, one, oh, one, zero, one, zero. The first uh, and the most uh, basic operation is a zoom. So it would generate an array that is almost twice the size. This is four, blo four, uh, four numbers. This is seven numbers. And it would copy uh, the numbers uh, to cells uh, uh, that are one apart. So it would be, this zero would be copied here. This zero would be copied below, the, it, it would be the third number. This one would be copied here. And this zero would be in the corner here. There's still number for, uh, there's still empty place for numbers. And another empty place, and then the uh, the next column. So it's zero, one, one, one. Again with empty spaces, and so on. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, and then it would fill the empty places uh, with uh, random. Uh, random numbers uh, based on the neighbors. So this uh, this place has two neighbors. It has a zero and a zero. Right. Right. What about technical biomes like rivers? Uh, yes, I seem to have forgotten about those. Usually what we do with uh, rivers uh, we take a uh, we take a two D noise map, w uh, which uh, basically what I've drawn here, uh, but 
we, uh, try to imagine this in uh, three dimensions. So it's f x v assigned y. And then we use a narrow band on the y-axis. And wherever the, the function crosses this band, uh, we make a, a river there. Uh, is this somewhat understandable? <laughs> or do I need to elaborate on this? Right. Ah. Uh. I have no idea how to actually explain this on a whiteboard. So maybe I can explain it with the article. Uh, okay, I'll try. So we have a function that uh, provides a third dimension to two dimensions. Uh, so you feed it two coordinates, uh, it gives you a third, third coordinate. And for this function, uh, we choose a threshold at which uh, uh, we choose a threshold. And uh, wherever this function uh, falls into the threshold, uh, we say this is a river. Let me draw it once again in a larger picture, perhaps. So we have a noise function that goes wild. And we choose a threshold, a small narrow band. And then wherever the function crosses the threshold, which is here, 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 and here, we say there's a river. Uh, this is one one D version. This is X and this is Y. If you extend uh, this to a three D, which means you add uh, Z to it, then it works really well for uh, for rivers. Uh, we're just uh, right now we're talking about biomes because uh, what we need is uh, to decide which biome to use. Uh, the blocks in the river are actually generated by the composition generator, so that's gonna go. That's that's still to come in the future. Okay. Yeah, within an hour. <laughs> All right, let's try to get back to the grown biomes. So we've got our uh, zoomed in table. And uh, for this number, it has two neighbors. It has a zero and a zero. So there's nothing to choose from. It has to be a zero. Uh, this space has two neighbors. It has a zero or a one. So we choose one randomly. Uh, randomly, but uh, the randomness needs to be repeatable. So we're using a noise function for that, uh, using it as a random number. So let's say this one goes, hmm, it's a one. This place has two neighbors. Both are one, so it has to be one. This has to be a zero. Uh, this. This one is interesting because it has four neighbors. So we can choose any one of the four neighbors. And let's say just to be difficult, we, we choose a one. Get rid of these, so it's a one. Uh, all the others here, we choose a zero and a zero. So let me fill it in just quickly. So so that we can continue. So I've added it. I've added in all the numbers that are uh, really no choice because uh, both the neighbors are the same. And now I need to fill in the randomly, 
randomly chosen numbers. I'm going to put down the microphone. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. <laughs> uh, let's recap. Uh, the zoom operation takes four numbers, A, B, C, and D, and it produces nine numbers out of them, which are A, B, C, and D, and here chooses A or B. Here it chooses A or C, here it chooses B or D, here it chooses C or D, and here any, any of the four. And in this man, in this manner, it uh, it fills in the entire large, uh, large table. So that's the zoom operation. Then, uh, if we chain uh, such zoom operations uh, together, uh, this little table can actually uh, produce something like this. You can already see that it's taking a shape vaguely uh, uh, reminding you of a terrain, uh, of, a, of a biome distribution between ocean and land, and that's exactly what's happening. If we zoom uh, several times uh, to be uh, correct I think we use uh, 32 levels of zoom uh, then it becomes a really uh, nice map of ocean versus terrain next operation deals with uh, things like this we have a uh, one that is isolated in a sea of zeros so we have a smooth operation And the smooth operation produces uh, a table that is two, uh, two items less in each direction. So for this case, it would be five items and five items. So it's basically taking the inner square in here. Oh, I have another color, don't I? Yeah, it's taking... Oh, that's much better. So it's taking the inner square and it's pro it's making a smooth operation, which basically means it compares each number to the four of its neighbors and it chooses, uh, if the neighbors are the same, it chooses the neighbors over the number. So this one has, um, has neighbors that are all zero. So it, instead of the one, it chooses a zero. This zero has neighbors that are zero and one, so no change in this direction. But in this direction, we have one and one, so it overrides it with a one. This one is critical because it is one and one in one direction and zero and zero in in the other direction so there's uh, actually nothing being done about this so it's just the one this zero uh, is a one and zero in one direction so no change but one and one in the other direction so it's a one and the last one it's a zero one one zero no change so it stays a one 
the next row. It has a 0, 1 in this direction, no change, but it has a 1, 1 in this direction, so it changes to 1. Uh, this, this one is no change. This one is no change in this direction, and this first one in this direction. This 0 is no change. This 0 is no change. So let me fill the rest. Islands are going to come in a moment. Okay, so now we can zoom and we can smooth out uh, the terrible things happening at some points. And this is basically what happens to the generic terrain. Now, uh, when we are zooming, uh, we need uh, some 32 levels of zoom uh, for the generator. But in, uh, we can do some advanced stuff between the levels because we don't want to really decide between ocean and land. We want to decide individual biomes. So what happens first, we do five zooms. And then we, uh, when we are left with uh, something like this, we rewrite some of the zeros with ones. And uh, let's say we didn't do that because I need lots of zeros now. Let's say we find a zero that is surrounded by zeros and we turn it into a two. What that means is uh, the two now will represent mushroom biomes. And uh, by doing this, we actually uh, enforce that the mushroom biome is surrounded by ocean. So we insert mushrooms. Then we zoom in a little bit more. And finally, uh, we decide uh, which of the land biomes are getting uh, what groups of biomes. Uh, and this is using the same group of uh, biomes that are used in the multi-step map, dry biomes, forest biomes, etc. And they are assigned uh, to the ones that are still left in the integer array. So suddenly, uh, the one that used to mean land uh, means dry. And there's a three that means forest. And there's a four meaning swarms, etc. So we convert land into groups of biomes. Then we zoom more. And f uh, the groups have grown quite a bit, and now we convert the groups into biomes. So what we are left now, uh, each number represents an individual biome, but each biome has only one pixel right now. So the last thing to do is to zoom some more. And of course, uh, after zooming, uh, we do several smooth passes. So whenever we zoom, be smooth. This is the basic of the generator. Of course, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but uh, I don't want to. S I don't want to go into too much detail. I think this is about as much as we want to know uh, for the basics. So, really, uh, this 
uh, combination of operations which are quite simple. It's amazing how well it actually works for generating the biomes. I was so amazed. Hmm, what time is it? Uh, I think, isn't it time for a break? Okay, so let's make a break here, and after the break, uh, I'll talk more about the, the rest of the composable generators, right?